Now, how is it that so many people are under this type of dominion? How is it that entities can look over a map, take a hammer, and shatter a country into pieces, split it up into seven countries like Bosnia Herzegovina, consolidate it back, implement puppets, govern the whole kit and caboodle, implement the IMF, International Monetary Fund, debt enslave the whole lot of them, So that everybody's just putting their hands out to the people that siphoned out all of the money just to get a portion of it back in the form of shelter, clothing, and food. With a lot of the people up in the top wanting everybody to be impoverished, so down and out that they want to grab a gun and shoot the next guy in a dog-eat-dog manifestation. Why? Why on earth do they want to sit in their ivory tower, go in their backyard and play a round of golf with armed bodyguards escorting the perimeter of the golf course, while you are engulfed and embroiled in battles of all kinds, chirping about sexual orientation, chirping about inequality, and chirping about other things that they would love you to continue doing from the start of your day to the end of your day. All of this outside of their world on a private jet going to an island, enjoying the beach, going back to their big house, going back to their secondary house, and making more laws to wrap more red tape around you and your children. And it's not their bank accounts that are at stake. It's not their pensions and their 401ks that are on the hot seat. And it's not their health care plan that's being affected by what doctor they can choose and whether or not they'll get treatment. It's not them that goes into battle, and it's not them that loses loved ones because of stupidity. And if it is, it's their own stupidity. Now if you want to talk about inequality, compare yourself to the elite class and not your fellow man. That's exactly what they want you to do, is compare yourself to your fellow man and hate your neighbor. Now they used to be better at divide and conquer when they could just be like, this is an Anglo-American, this guy is white, we are the conquistadors, this guy is red-skinned, this guy is brown-skinned, he is the enemy, take care of him. Nowadays it's a little tougher to see who your friend or your foe is, based on whatever your leadership is telling you. And I am appalled to see that I moved to a place two hours away from the, one of the biggest army bases called Fort Hood here in Missouri in the same year that it was implemented by the Secretary of State and others that we would be having, the no, Department of State official, that we would be training that Christians are the new terrorists and that conservatives are the new terrorists. And that tea parties are the new terrorists. If you don't believe me, take a look at the news. Google Fort Hood and Google Tea Party. Google terrorist and you'll see the documents. Happened in 2013. Really, is that who you're training for now? All of a sudden, the new terrorist is the American citizen. Born, bred, national. Are you kidding me? If that doesn't prove to you that every nation state on planet Earth is the enemy and that everybody at the top wants to consolidate it all, 
and put all of the people under them into the same basket, I don't know what will prove it to you. You are not in the world that you think you are in until you stand up and say something about it, resist, and vote those people that are globalists out of office. If you want Emperor Palpatine, one will be provided. If you want Darth Vader and a bunch of imperialists, one is already being provided. Now, I personally don't find that an aggregation of power such as that is very good. One man, one entity, and one little segment should not have that much power. It's a lot better when we, the people, can take care of business. And quite honestly, it's more inclusive, more good ideas are used, and people live a better quality of life. People tend to help one another a lot more when all of the power is not being brought and put into some one person or one group's lap. That should make sense to most everybody. Because I think by nature, nobody likes to be dominated by the same individual or individuals. So this is where I have a problem with the policies that are being implemented, the way of life we are currently under, the rat race, and the exclusivity that you're seeing in the true division between elites, globalists, and the common man. Now the commute is over. We are parked at a red light and the volume of the radio has come down as the speed of the vehicle. So I'm not needing to raise my voice. And I'd like to say that is the fury that comes with analysis of politics. But it's also the same burning fury that you get in your belly that drives you to resist, to come at it head on, and to show people a better path. And make decisions that benefit instead of helping propagate the horrible things that you see by sitting with your head in the sand like an ostrich. And believe me, it's sitting in the, hand, sitting in the sand with our head in it that has caused this to take place. Complacency and silence is what has caused us to be in the situation that we are in now. How can we watch governments say, take away your guns, you in America, as they ship them everywhere else in the world and make bigger and better and more powerful, more dangerous army machines? How can we watch that? And seriously, that's why the nation state of America was so amazing. What nation was going to come and march into another nation, such as ours, where 300 million people could potentially own their own handgun, rifle, defend themselves, and truly stand up and squash anybody that walked in? Well, nowadays, people in power want more power, so they don't want all of us to have that right and do what we want. Because then we might have a problem with taxation, the hours we work, the quality of life we're living. We might do something about it and actually just not elect these people, not allow them to stay in power, and not pay them all the money that they take from us. Because seriously, they're living pretty good. And what kind of service are they doing for us? They get paid really good for a lot of things that are quite unnecessary. Think about that. There is a better way. Think about that. This is Eugene Roundtree the Third, High Voltage News, signing off of this podcast on socialism, corporate fascism, and the fallacies thereof. Have a wonderful day, and uh, keep fighting the good fight. Adios.